In this video, we're talking about severe weather in the North Plains and Midwest. Also, we have to talk about Hurricane Henri, which could be the first hurricane to make landfall in its projected area in 30 years. Welcome back, y'all. Ryan Hall here with the weather forecast. Guys, things are really ramping up out there. The majority of this video will be about Hurricane Henry. I'm calling it Henry. Remember that. <laughs> but I still want to talk about the severe weather outbreak that we will experience starting today in the North Plains in the Midwest. So I'm going to start off with that, but if you want to skip around and only watch the parts that pertain to you, I have timestamps down in the description below. I do that for every video. Now, if you're new here, hello, welcome to the channel. Uh, this is what I do, okay? I talk about the weather pretty much anytime there's anything going on, whether it's a blizzard in the winter, a hurricane in hurricane season, or a tornado outbreak, or anything like that. I come on here and I do in-depth weather analysis while I guide you through the forecast and what's supposed to happen. And then during really severe weather events, I live stream and I live cover it right here uh, from my uh, uh, YouTube weather studio in Kentucky. So please consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. Uh, I'm going to be posting daily video updates on Hurricane Henri as we go forward. And if you like that, uh, come along, all right? We're trying to get to 100,000 subscribers before a year, and I think we can do it. I think we can do it with your help, all right? So let's get right into talking about the weather. All right, here's a big old view of the United States of America. And as you can see, we got a couple things going on right now. If we zoom into the central portion of the United States, uh, we've got a big circulating low pressure system causing some storms here uh, from North Dakota all the way down into Kansas, really. And that's going to continue to cause more storms, especially this afternoon, uh, and especially in Minnesota and Iowa. And we're going to talk more about that right here in a second. But there's some big time severe weather expected today. And then, of course, we've got to go down here and check on uh, Henri, okay? So once again, the the correct pronunciation here is Henri. Um, the, the H is uh, uh, silent, I guess, or Henri or something like that. Uh, but like, I, I, can't, I can't call it that. I don't know what it is about uh, my mouth or some sort of uh, Eastern Kentucky hillbilly filter I've got uh, that just won't let that come out right. So I, I'm calling it Henry. All right, I know that's wrong. And if that, you know, offends you or if that you know makes you feel bad about watching this channel I'm sorry I can't change it all right as of right now as of, as I'm filming this video it's actually just a tropical storm but it's very quickly going to uh, form into a hurricane remember uh, a hurricane is a, a tropical storm with winds higher than 74 miles an hour I think the winds in this right now are just 70 so it's basically a hurricane uh, you know if you were just to look at this and, and you know try to uh, predict where this is going by yourself without any model guidance you would say hey well that's probably going to Georgia or South Carolina or maybe even the northern part of the peninsula of Florida. But no, this thing's actually going to pull a switchback side juke or something <laughs> and actually go all the way up and uh, affect uh, Long Island in Massachusetts and Connecticut and Rhode Island. So, And as you can see here, along uh, Long Island, we have hurricane watches in effect right now. So uh, we're going to get really deep into this here in a second. But first, let's talk about the severe weather. All right, we're starting off with the three kilometer NAM model now looking at the central portion of the United States. And once again, we do have that slight risk of severe weather today for uh, much of the Northern Plains and two part of the Midwestern regions. And we're going to explain why right now on this weather model, okay? If you wanna keep up with the time, it's always gonna be displayed up there above my head in Eastern daylight time, uh, keep that in mind. And what we're looking at here is the composite reflectivity, okay? This is kind of what the radar could look like as we go later on into the day. Uh, let's skip forward here a little bit. As you can see, around 4 p.m. today during the heating of the day when that humidity level's high, the dew points are high, we're going to see some big storms form on the front leading edge of the cold front that's associated with the circulation here uh, that's sparking up these storms. It's right around 4, 5, and 6 o'clock uh, where we do have a little bit of a tornado threat here, okay? So in extreme eastern South Dakota, southwestern Minnesota, and northwestern Iowa, uh, I would definitely be uh, on the lookout for some isolated tornadoes tornadoes today, okay? Not a huge tornado outbreak is expected. I don't think so, uh, but definitely there's some spin in the atmosphere. Some of those uh, 500 millibar and 850 millibar elevated winds are going to be cranking around 60 knots, so I would definitely, uh, would not be surprised if we saw some supercells in the beginning of this storm system uh, that did spark some tornadoes. But the main threat here, if you live anywhere east of here, uh, is going to be straight line damaging winds, okay? As you can see, as we pull this forward, uh, this quickly congeals into a 
straight line damaging wind threat. Anytime you see these straight lines of storms, especially if they kind of bow and look like a uh, backwards uh, C there, uh, we're talking about some big time winds, possibly above 60 or 70 miles an hour. So if you live anywhere uh, from even southern Kansas all the way up through northern Minnesota, uh, be prepared today for some uh, severe weather. This is going to be a big wall of wind that's moving through. And then as we get later on into the night and early morning hours on Saturday, August 21st, here we are at 2 a.m. Uh, this stuff dies out. OK, so before it gets to Des Moines, before it gets to Wisconsin uh, and, and pretty much before it gets to southern areas of Missouri and southeastern areas of Kansas, it's going to die out. OK, and uh, pretty much, you know, if you get hit at 5 a.m. in uh, central Missouri with this storm, it's just going to be some heavy rain and some uh, maybe some uh, really loud thunder and lightning and stuff like that. So that's all you got to worry about there. And then we're going to keep pushing this forward. We get a break tomorrow on Sunday. We do have another chance for some more severe weather to pop up uh, in South Dakota and then a little bit further east into Minnesota and Iowa as well. OK, and this one actually looks like it could be a little bit more intense on the tornado side. I don't want to talk too much about that right now. We will talk more about it tomorrow, but I do want to go ahead and start talking about Hurricane Henry. And that's what we're going to do right now. Just remember, if you live out here, slight risk today for this area and there's a slight risk on Sunday for this area. So if you live out here in that yellow shaded area, make sure you are prepared for some big time wind gusts and maybe some hail. All right. Now we have to talk about Tropical Storm and future Hurricane Henry here. And this is uh, going to be a very detailed update. OK, so we're going to look at multiple different model runs. Uh, we're going to talk about a lot of different things. And I just want to do everything I can to make sure that people along the coast here are prepared for this, uh, because like I said, it's not very often that we get storms like this. Now, don't get me wrong. It's not extremely unusual. It's not unprecedented. Uh, the Northeast gets hurricanes sometimes, uh, but, you know, <laughs> it doesn't happen very often, especially they don't make landfall as hurricanes very often. So uh, and especially not this far north. So, you know, there's a lot of things we got to talk about and we're going to get right into that. But we're first going to look at the official National Hurricane Center's update. As you can see right now, 65 mile an hour winds. I think that probably in the next update, it'll be a little bit stronger than that. And as you can see, the track takes it directly north from where it is right now. And they do expect it to become a low end hurricane around 2 p.m. tomorrow uh, east of the Outer Banks of the Carolinas. OK, so this will probably cause some pretty choppy uh, waters over here on the coast from Virginia Beach all the way up through the Delmarva area into southern portions of New Jersey. And then it's around 2 a.m. on Sunday where uh, some of the models and maybe even the Hurricane Center are predicting that this will become uh, actually a pretty intense hurricane, maybe a Category 2, possibly a Category 3. I don't know for sure yet, uh, but there are some models that are suggesting that. And then uh, once it gets a little bit further north, pretty much once it gets past the 40 degree north uh, latitude line there, uh, the waters become a lot colder and it's harder for hurricanes to survive. So it'll start de-intensifying from there and then it will likely still make landfall somewhere around Long Island to Cape Cod uh, as a, a hurricane. OK, and right now we're expecting it to be a low end hurricane. But just the other day, we were, we were expecting this thing to go out to sea. So things can still change. It could make landfall as an intense hurricane or it could still weaken enough to make landfall as just a tropical storm. So let's really dig in and see what's going to happen with the weather model. Models. All right, so here is the NAM three kilometer. Uh, <laughs> this is its take on Hurricane Henry. Okay, now I do need to throw out a disc disclaimer here. The NAM three kilometer model is not made for hurricanes. Okay, so it, it has a tendency to be a little bit bullish with the intensification process, and it also quite often really just paints a the worst case scenario picture. All right, uh, now I'm the reason I'm showing this is because just because this paints the worst case scenario picture doesn't mean that we should throw it in the trash. A worst case scenario can happen. OK, that's why they call it a worst case scenario. It is a, a real scenario that can happen. Um, so we, we, we need to look at all the different options. And, you know, we'll also look at options that are not as intense. So uh, this is the NAM three kilometer. This is what it's showing. As you can see, you can see the rapid intensification there uh, at this point around 4 a.m. on Saturday. Uh, we do have a hurricane here uh, south and east of uh, North Carolina moving north. And then it really intensifies right here as some of those outer bands are actually reaching the outer banks of North Carolina and this is where it starts to get a little bit ridiculous we have at this point a strong hurricane with a well-defined eye wall uh, moving directly north towards Long Island look at that 
that right there, if that verifies, if that verifies, the satellite images and the radar imagery from that will be remembered for the rest of our lives. Honestly, if we see that well of an organized storm uh, moving north towards uh, New York uh, and Long Island there, that will be something to remember. And then as you can see, once it gets past that 40 degree north line, it rapidly starts to deteriorate. But according to this model, it still makes landfall as a pretty intense hurricane there on the eastern half of Long Island. Now let's root, 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 root. <laughs> Let's reverse it a little bit here and actually look at the wind speeds. So this model is going to show us 10 meter gusts. So about 10 meters above the surface. This is how fast the winds will be blowing. Uh, you know, not necessarily exactly ground truth, but it's pretty close to what we could expect uh, if the, this storm was actually this strong. And as you can see, the rapid intensification starts pretty much after it crosses uh, the line here that separates uh, Virginia and North Carolina. Once it gets past there, I guess it gets out of some of the uh, directional wind shear that's kind of tearing it apart down south and it's allowed to rapidly intensify and remember there's also an area of warm water here that it can use as kind of like a jet fuel uh, to continue to um, intensify uh, and it's going to do that it looks like until it hits this area where the waters get a little bit colder and then it will start to weaken out a little bit so as you can see right here it's showing maybe you know this is a 130 mile an hour uh, <laughs> hurricane that's a Phew. That would be a storm of the likes we had never seen in this area, honestly. Uh, and then as you can see, 140, 140 miles an hour as it gets closer to New Jersey and Long Island. And then it finally hits those uh, colder waters and starts to weaken. But still, uh, a 100 mile an hour wind field over Long Island. Uh, moving into Connecticut and Rhode Island would be a disaster, a true disaster uh, for this area. So that, that's the worst thing that can happen, okay? It's very unlikely that this model comes to fruition because of its bias towards uh, being too strong. Uh, but I did want to show you that because, you know, in my opinion, if you live up here, especially on the coast, especially in an area that can be affected by hurricanes, why not prepare for the worst and hope for the best? But that's what it's looking like right now. A, a, according to the NAM 3 kilometer model, a very intense hurricane uh, making landfall there in uh, Long Island. Once again, unlikely that this is what happens. So let's take a look at some more likely things uh, with some of the other weather models. All right, this is the GFS, the global forecast model. Okay, it's done okay this year with tropical systems. So let's see what it does with it. It looks to me like the maximum uh, area of wind around the center of circulation is around 100 miles an hour at this point. And once again, it's right there around that line that separates North Carolina and Virginia. There's something about this area that the models are really uh, adapting to the idea that it's going to start really rapidly intensifying there. So, you know, a hundred mile an hour hurricane, that is definite, w definitely within the realm of possibility. And this one actually shows it weakening a little bit here before it gets to Long Island and Rhode Island and Connecticut, which makes a little bit more sense because I'm telling you, the water's right here, especially, you know, 50 miles south of Long Island and the straight across, uh, they're, they're not very favorable for cyclonics storms to kind of thrive in. So I think the GFS is seeing that much better and it shows land falling winds only around, you know, 50 to 60 miles an hour and then very quickly going down to 30 to 40 miles an hour. Okay. So really the strongest winds would be felt right there on the Eastern tip of Long Island, maybe uh, approaching 60, 70 miles an hour. And then, uh, as it got closer to, um, Rhode Island, we're talking about 50 miles an hour, 40, 30, and then it's gone. Okay. Now don't get me wrong. If this was what, if this was what happens, um, it's still going to be bad. There's still going to be bad flooding, coastal flooding. Uh, you know, you've got at this point on at 8 AM on Sunday, if there's actually a 70 or 80 mile an hour sustained winds blowing up towards Cape Cod, uh, and pushing all that water up towards it, there's going to be coastal flooding up here that, you know, once again, you haven't seen this in, in a long time. Additionally, sustained winds of 50 to 80 miles an hour in, in the Northeast, it's going to take down tons of trees. The trees up here in the Northeast are not the same as the trees down here <laughs> in the Gulf of Mexico. So like, you know, yeah, they can get an 80 mile an hour storm and not much happens, but up here, a lot of trees are going to fall, especially because of all the rainfall that's going to saturate the ground and help aid in that process of bringing down trees. Uh, so expect power outages, expect lots of coastal flooding. And this looks like a realistic situation to me. So uh, keep that in mind as we go forward. That's what the GFS looks like. Now there are more models, okay? There are more models. Let's show you another one that I like to look at. All 
right, this is the HWRF model, okay? And I like to look at this one because they have the hurricane panel. Uh, we can look at the 925 millibar wind speeds here, which just kind of shows you the intensity of the storm as far as wind goes. This isn't what the winds will be like on the surface at all. We can also see the precipitable water, which shows us how much uh, uh, rainfall is possible within the core of the storm. Uh, anytime you see those purples and blues, you're talking about a ton of precipitable water and just absolute downpours. We get to see the sea surface temperature and the MSLP here, which shows us how warm the water is and also how deep the central pressure is in the storm. And then of course we get a radar loop too. So let's switch to Henry here and let's start pushing her forward. All right. Now, once again, this, all these models are showing that from where it is right now, from where it is right now, it's going to immediately start going north. All right, so uh, that's another thing to keep in mind. Watch that satellite image, okay? By the time this video goes up, it should be going north, directly north. If it's not, if you can look at satellite on your own and see that it's still moving a little bit further west, then that means the whole track of this storm is gonna go a little bit further west, which is bad, okay? The further south and west this storm hits the United States, the stronger it's gonna be because it'll be in warmer water. So keep that in mind. So here we are going all the way up into Saturday, August 21st at 5 p.m. We've got a strong storm now. Uh, with 925 millibar winds uh, and over 100 miles an hour as it approaches uh, Long Island once again. Really, this is what I want to focus on, okay? Remember, sea surface temperatures down here, you see the reds and the browns, that's the jet fuel. That's the jet fuel that storms need like this to evolve. But as soon as this storm crosses over into the yellows and especially the light yellows, that's kryptonite to Superman, okay? It's getting eaten alive by the cooler temperatures there, and you can see that rapid uh, de-intensification there as it goes across the eastern tip of Long Island, and I do think uh, that that's probably where it's going to make landfall, okay? All right, so we've looked at three or four models now that show different paths and possibilities for Hurricane Henry here, and that's not all of them, okay? There are a lot of models out there that are predicting the path of this thing, and we can kind of look at all of them in one picture here. Uh, this this is the GEFS model guidance, so it's a group of models that, you know, try to figure out where this storm's going to go, and as you can see, the vast majority of them take this uh, over the eastern portion of Long Island, and that's where I expect it's going to go. Some of them However, do take it closer to Manhattan or the, uh, you know, Tom's River, New Jersey area. And if that was to happen, we're talking about a much worse storm, okay? But there's also some models that say it's going to go through Cape Cod and maybe, you know, make another landfall in Maine. If that was to happen, it would be a less intense storm once again. But the general path here is going to take it pretty much exactly where the National Hurricane Center's cone of uncertainty takes it. And that's what we're looking at right now. All right. So that's uh, pretty much all of the update I have for you right now for Hurricane Henry. And uh, there's going to be a lot of new information coming out very soon. Uh, this might get to a situation where I update you more than once a day. I'm not 100% sure on that, uh, but I would definitely be updating you every morning on the latest updates with this storm, the National Hurricane Center, all the latest models and stuff like that. And I know that everything that you just watched was a little bit overwhelming. We saw a lot of different possibilities and a lot of different outcomes. That's just part of meteorology, okay? <laughs> I like to show you all the options because you don't get to see that on TV, okay? Okay, if you watch the Weather Channel, if you watch CNN or whatever, whoever's covering the storm, and trust me, all the news stations are going to be covering the storm. They're not showing you what I just showed you. They're, they're looking at that themselves and then making up their own opinions about what's going to happen. I like to show you everything, and uh, hopefully you learn something along the way, and hopefully you are more informed because of it. Now, if you do want my opinion, I think that this storm's going to continue to intensify, um, and I think that it's going to go a little bit further west than a lot of, what a lot of models are showing, so I would not be surprised if we saw a landfall on the eastern or central portion of Long Island, okay? Please take this seriously and prepare now. Take whatever precautions are necessary for you uh, in a situation where we have a storm like this. Now, if you're 100 miles inland, I don't think you have too much to worry about unless you live next to a flood-prone area. If you're on the shore, expect storm surge higher than what you've seen before and expect sustained wind gusts probably higher than what you've ever seen before. Uh, that That's basically the, the, the warning I'm going to give you right now. It could change tomorrow, could be better, could be worse, uh, but I don't want to scare anybody. I don't want to hype this up. I just want to make sure you're prepared, okay? And if this does end up becoming a major hurricane and it looks like it's going to be this devastating event for the Northeast, I will be doing live coverage here on the channel. So once again, make sure you subscribe and turn notifications on so you don't miss that. And I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.